The slander that Cade Cunningham was getting at the start of the season was flat out ridiculous. Man, in this guy's first 15 games, he was struggling, averaging 13 points per game on a terrible 33% from the field and 25% from three, which is pretty bad. So bad, in fact, that if you compared those numbers to all of the players averaging at least five points per game this season, he would be dead last. And we're talking about a guy who was the number one pick in a draft class that will probably be, in my opinion, a top five NBA draft class of all time, which I, mean, I don't know. It's kind of debatable. Uh, I might make another video on it, but that's a conversation for another day. Yeah, real quick, by the way, if you guys enjoyed the video, if you watched the whole thing and you enjoy it, do something about it, man. Like it, subscribe, comment, come on. So after his first 15 games, everyone started overreacting, even though this man is hurt at the start of the season, even though he is a rookie point guard, which is the hardest position to adapt to, and even though while most of the other rookies had teammates with lots of talent to lessen the pressure on them, Cade Cunningham, well, okay, so he had Jeremy Grant, he has Sadiq Bey, and he has some other Pistons players, yeah. <laughs> And since then, Cade Cunningham has been proving all of his haters wrong, going on a tear, averaging 18, 6, and 5 on 44% from the field, 40% from 3, and 82% from the line in his last 18 games. I know, it's a crazy concept that the rookie just needed a little bit more time to adjust to professional basketball. And now, Cade Cunningham is second in the rookie ladder. And honestly, stat-wise, if we're just talking about stats, Cade Cunningham has been playing better than Evan Mobley. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate that Cade has to compete against debatably one of the greatest rookie defenders ever who's on a team with one of the best playmakers in the league while Cade Cunningham you know hasn't played with Jeremy Grant in over a month doesn't have an elite pick and roll big to give him easy, easy assists and his team is 29th in three-point percentage so a lot of his uh, passes are wide open threes that just miss yeah he doesn't really have much shooting around him but uh oh well so the title of this video will probably be why Cade it will be the best from his draft class because well that's what's going to happen <laughs> Is it hypocritical of me to say, you know, these guys are in their rookie year, there's no reason to judge them this hard, or being a point guard rookie is that hard, and then, you know, automatically next say, well, Cade Cunningham is going to be the best ever. Yes, it is hypocritical, but I kind of don't care because it's kind of an obvious opinion. Not, not, not too obvious, but obvious enough where it's like a 50-50. It's really between Evan Mobley and Cade Cunningham right now, and I think Cade Cunningham will easily be the best player from this draft class. He is the exact prototype that I love in NBA point guards, and there is no reason for him not to be the best point guard in the NBA in the next four to five years. He is a really good shooter, as I said before. He's shooting 40% in the last 18 games from three, which isn't really a fluke because he shot the same accuracy from three in college in you know his freshman year in college that probably sounded so dumb but i'm gonna keep it in so assuming that Cade cunningham shoots 40 percent from three in a season because i feel like it's just it's only gonna improve he'd only be the 758th player to do this shoot 40 percent from three in a season so uh yeah de definitely impressive but obviously you know, that's not all that Cade Cunningham has to offer scoring wise or anything. He's actually really good inside the paint. He can shoot a floater, a mid range, finish inside with a little layup. He has athleticism. He can throw it down. He has a lot for the two point range that he can do. And also keep in mind that he's already scoring like this inside the two point range and he doesn't really have any spacing or kind of, you know, passing threat that can really, I mean, I guess, I guess uh, Isaiah Stewart is a good lob threat kind of but not 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 compared to the other bigs in the nba and in the last 18 games he's been shooting 48 percent from two-point range so i have a feeling that that's going to go up to 50 percent in the next couple years and when you really look at the amount of players who have shot 50 percent from two and 40 percent from three that number goes from 758 to 281 also i i kind of completely forgot that yeah that minimum was with five points per game um, I think Cade Cunningham is going to average more than five points per game. So when you put the minimum points per game at 16 points per game with that kind of shooting efficiency, that he will be in the same club as 58 other NBA players. But you know, Cade Cunningham, he's great scoring wise, right? But uh, he's not really known as a scorer or that's not really his specialty. He's actually a really good playmaker as a point guard should be. And even though Cade Cunningham's, you know, playmaking goes way beyond the assist count, if you just look at the assist count so far in these last couple games, he's been averaging 5.7 assists per game. So let's just say in a couple years, you know, not his prime, but in a couple years, he's averaging 6.5 assists per game. And this is the minimum because he's going to average more than that. But let's just say 6.5. 
If you add that with all the scoring uh, credentials that I already said, only 13 other NBA players have ever done this. Another part of Cade Cunningham's game that is really underrated is his ability to rebound. He's been averaging about 5 rebounds per game these last 18 games, so if we add this, then I am projecting Cade Cunningham to be scoring 16 points per game on 50% from 2, 40% from 3, also averaging 6.5 assists and 5 rebounds per game. Only 4 NBA players have ever done this. Prime Larry Bird. 2013 Prime LeBron James, 2016 Prime Steph Curry, and 2019 Kyrie. And I've even accounted for his defense, which trust me, Cade Cunningham is going to be a way better defender than Steph Curry ever was, and way better defender than Kyrie Irving ever was or will be. And yeah, this is the very minimum I think Cade Cunningham will do. My predictions for his prime are averages of about 25 points per game, 7 rebounds per game, and about 9 assists per game with great efficiency and being a top 5 point guard defender. In my opinion, that he'll be the best player out of this draft class is no discredit to anyone else in the class. I still think that Evan Mobley will be an all-NBA player and defensive player of the year, Scotty Barnes will be an all-star, Jalen Suggs will be an all-star and great leader, Davion Mitchell will be one of the greatest perimeter defenders ever, and other players like Franz Wagner, Jalen Green, Josh Giddy, and Kuminga will all be very good. But I'm very high on Cade. I think that if you're a rebuilding team and looking for a young star to build around, and you can choose any young player in the league, Cade Cunningham will be a top 5 option. He has the potential to have everything you want in a point guard, just like spacing, patience, hustle, and lots more. If you watch the whole thing, it doesn't hurt to subscribe. My last video got like 8k views and I only gained like 20 subs. I mean, thank you, by the way. I expected the video to get like 7 views. Um, but yeah, if you guys can help me out, I'm really trying to hit 300 subscribers before January. And that's the video. Peace.